Hello, everybody. Welcome to another edition of the Computer America program. Ben and I have a terrific show planned for you, as always. In the second hour, we're going to be doing computer and technology news. That's brought to you by Slimware Utilities, the official optimization software of Computer America. And in the first hour, we're going to bring to you Stitcher. Um, Stitcher is a very interesting website. Uh, we're going to be talking about it here. Uh, no, 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 no. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Real quick. Not it, Stitcher. I'm, Stitcher, I'm, is, I'm, Stitcher is what we are broadcasting on. Yeah, or my, broadcasting too. Stitch is, is our guest. Thank you so much. I mean Stitch. And it's all about companionship, finding companions, uh, travel, uh, love and romance. Uh, we, that's what we Two think about. minutes until showtime. But also their group activities, dinner dates, just company, anything you need. If you're looking for someone uh, for companionship, Stitch is the place to check out. Uh, we're going to be talking to the company's co-founder, Marcy Rogo, is going to be here with us. So sit back, relax, as we bring you two hours of Computer America coming right at you here. Stay with us. It's a natural mistake, Ben, you know, <laughs> stitch, stitcher, you know. Yeah, throwing an extra ER at the end, but it changes the whole sentence. It really yes, does. It really does. It does, exactly. So, uh, yeah, and not only that, but I hope everyone got a chance to check out the uh, live stream event of the announcement, the Oculus announcement. All right. Well, we're starting up, so uh, <laughs> here we go. One minute until showtime. Fifteen seconds. Your show will go live in five seconds. Four, three, two, one. Broadcasting live, it's America's longest running national radio talk show on computers, Computer America, hosted by national columnist Craig Crossman. Look for Craig's weekly column in your favorite newspaper. This show is being beamed nationwide at ComputerAmerica.com. Keep it here for technology news, computer products, guest interviews, and your phone calls. You're listening to Computer America. Hello and welcome into the Computer America show. It's the nation's longest running, nationally syndicated radio talk show on computers. Computer America is heard around the world and coast to coast. And I'm your host, Craig Crossman. And my co-host, Ben, will be joining us momentarily as we begin our two-hour show here on Thursday. Uh, it is September the 24th, two days before my birthday. <laughs> yes, yes, I know. I'm going to be 38 again. Exactly. All right. So uh, anyway, welcome into the Computer America Show. I'm hey. glad we had our, our daily Craig's birthday is coming up announcement. <laughs> That's right. All gifts should be appropriately sent to the, uh, to, uh, the proper address. Um, so yes, that would be Ben at <laughs> ComputerAmerica.com. Yes, he's my, my gift screener. Ben will screen all gifts and make sure that the, they are appropriate before we eat, eat all the food, play with all the toys, you know. Yeah, we were, the, we, the, the, the life of a tester. Yes, it is. Uh, and, and it is a, a truly a dreary one, but something that needs to be done. Right, Ben? Uh -huh. Yeah, that, that's how you review things. Well, exactly. Well, if you have a comment or a question for our guest uh, today from Stitch, uh, we're going to be uh, talking about Stitch. This is a website where you go to define companionship. And not, you know, we think of love and romance and, and dating, that's true, but also 
perhaps for travel companions or group activities or you know, maybe just company. Uh, we're going to be talking about this really interesting website with its uh, with the co-founder, uh, Marcy Roga, will be uh, joining us momentarily. And we'll, uh, and then in the second hour, we're going to be doing computer and technology news that's brought to you by Slimware Utilities, the official optimization software of Computer America. And by the way, if you have a comment or a question for our guests, give us a call, 347-884-8881. That's 347-884-8881. We'll get you on and get you through. Uh, but if you're radio shy, you don't want to go on the phone, we have another mechanism for you. Just go to any of our uh, website pages at computeramerica.com. Any page in the upper right-hand corner, you'll see submit a question. Just click on that. Uh, you'll get your question submission page. Just type in your question or your comment, hit the submit button, and Ben and I will see that immediately, and then we can ask it for you to our guests. Okay, So that's another way. Now, the other thing that we invite you to join is our live video stream. Yes, we're a radio talk show, but we also stream our live video for you to watch. Just go to computeramerica.com. On any page, you'll see right there the pull-down menus. Uh, it says Show Lounge. It's right there on the pull-down menu. Just click that, and the video stream will begin automatically for you. You don't have to do anything else. And then you can watch the show. You can see myself. Uh, you can see Ben. Sometimes you can see our guests. Sometimes you can't. Uh, but you can't. Ben has the technology to display websites, videos, movies. He can display all that while we're talking. So it's just another way for you to experience the uh, what we call computer america just makes a more enhanced version of that so now as far as listening of course you can listen to us on blog talk radio network you can listen to us on uh, the uh, uh, irn radio network uh, we're also on stitcher yes <laughs> you can listen to us there and soundcloud another network you can listen to us also on the irn radio network the tune in radio network just go to computeramerica.com. All the different places you can listen to the show live are there, and also all the places you can listen to archives of Computer America are also at our internet home, computeramerica.com. Everything you need to know about us is right there. So uh, anything else you want to mention before we uh, bring our guests on, uh, Ben? Uh, no, just uh, I hope that everyone was able to catch the uh, the, the keynote because you know, we talk all the time whenever Apple has a keynote. We spend whole shows on it. And uh, the the Oculus VR had a keynote today showing off what they're going to actually be selling. And they actually had a release date because up until this point, we only had one other virtual reality headset and they weren't going into full on uh, production and sale until the beginning of next year. Mm -hmm. But the Oculus VR has announced that they will be out in November of this year. Is so. It now, you are our consummate gamer here at Computer America. Are See, you but this isn't just a gaming device, though. I think a lot of people, even beyond gamers, and they're really positioning it that way, to this just be, you know, everyone has a toaster, everyone has a microwave, and now, you know, you're going to have a console and you're going to have an Oculus VR, so, or you're going to have a virtual reality headset. So it's, uh, it's really exciting, not just for gamers, but for really everyone. All right. Well, and, do you we'll, and we'll be talking about that one in the second hour. You plan to be uh, to get one yourself? You still oh, for sure, for sure. And, and and at the price point that they are offering it, oh, there there's no reason not to get one. All right, there you go. All right, well, I'm I'm, I'm excited to talk to our our guest this hour. Uh, she is from Stitch, a small technology company with a grand vision of helping address social isolation and loneliness for older adults in every country around the world. Okay? Now, Stitch is passionate about the problem it's solving, and they're proud to be the ones trying to solve it. They even go so far to say that they're as excited about helping address loneliness as it's human humanly possible to be. That's a heck of a statement right there. Uh, joining us is Marcy Rogo, the co-founder of Stitch. Uh, Marcy, welcome into Computer America. How are you? Thank you. I'm happy to be here. appreciate it. Yes. Uh, a noble Thanks for joining us. Yeah. yeah. A noble ambition, bringing people together. This is a uh, seems to me like a wonderful thing. Why don't you, in your own words, because I kind of described it briefly, but for our listeners, why don't you tell our listeners what exactly Stitch is all about? Sure. So Stitch is a way to address the social isolation problem, but through a much more fun, um, easygoing uh, service. So what Stitch does is we connect adults over 50 for companionship. So that includes both romance and friendship, 
as well as group activities and single travel opportunities. And we do that through our online community. We're also really big on safety, so we have uh, strict verification uh, processes to make sure that everyone is over 50 and they are who they say they are. And by doing this and by creating more connections in, in the lives of you know divorcees and widows, people that have lost their social circles due to death or divorce or maybe relocation for grandchildren, by introducing new connections in their lives uh, in a safe way, we can ensure that people will be more active, stay healthier. Um, it's all been proven that the, the more socially isolated you are, the uh, sooner you will die. Um, you're basically as likely to die as uh, if you were a cigarette smoker or obese after a certain age. So we're trying to um, prevent that by making it easy to meet new people and go to group activities and do things as you age and by using technology to kind of be the bridge there. All right. That came off a little bit as you stitch or die, but I'm sure that's not what you were going for. <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah, I guess you could say that. You stitch or die. I, I, I'm good at that. <laughs> we'll hopefully encourage people to sign up that way. Interesting marketing. <laughs> interesting marketing approach. I, uh, I get, but I guess it could be effective. <laughs> All right. So yeah, it could be. Could be. We we tend not to. I mean, we're very mission driven, but you know, our marketing approach is more about the connections and the fun and the possibility for romance and, and other things that we do to you that are unique to this group. Now, you use the word companionship, and I guess you can be quite liberal with that word. But, so what do, you, what do you mean, or what does Stitch mean when you meant to say the word companionship? That's a great question. Companionship is definitely the most important word in our vocabulary because we are basically saying we're taking it a step down from the words marriage and soulmate, uh, life partner, um, husband, wife, mm -hmm. things that are usually used by traditional dating sites. And we're doing that because we aren't offering those things. Um, if it happens, that's great. But what we've been told for the past several years is that when someone, someone who is divorced or widowed does feel like they had that experience of marriage and they don't necessarily want to do it again for, for several reasons, uh, which I can get into later, or they have had the love of their life, they've had their soulmate, and the idea of finding a new one is not appealing. So companionship is really what people are looking for, meaning someone to do things with, a like-minded person. And if it turns out to be a romance, that's fantastic. And if it doesn't, that's okay too. So that's basically what we're offering. All right. So go ahead, Ben. So uh, yeah, real quick, uh, 50 is, you know, the, the, it's obviously not, not a bad number. You, you've given a lot of reasons for why you're targeting, uh, you know, older adults. But why, why 50? Why not, you know, something maybe a little bit closer to, her, to retirement age, something a little bit lower? Like, what made you decide 50? That's also a great question. Yeah, 50 is not old. And, and nothing is really old these days, um, given, you know, the fact that we had like a 92-year-old emailing us, asking us where, you know, our um, app is on the app store. She's, you know, she's ready to go. Um, but we, we did 50 because the idea is to put peers together within the baby boomer and senior segments. And people really wanted to come on that were, you know, as young as in their 30s. So we wanted to figure out how can we invite as many people as possible that aren't, let's say, gold diggers, um, mm -hmm. but that are in the same stage. And when I say stage, I mean post-reproduction. You've had your kids. The person that you're seeking on Stitch is not going to be someone you're looking to reproduce with because the things you're looking for in that kind of person are completely different than what you're looking for with someone you're not reproducing with, if that makes sense. That makes perfect uh, sense. You don't offer those, those filters. I see. So let's talk a little bit about how Stitch works. I mean, give us an overview of when you go to Stitch and you, at the website, which, by the way, is www.stitch.net is the website. Uh, what, what do you, how, does, how do you start? So you can start by um, signing up. It's really quick. You just need uh, an email and a password. Then we kind of walk you through some things, and you'll kind of start setting up your profile, um, just a few things to have a basic profile, and then we kind of bring you into our community where you can go peruse and you can go look at what people are talking about for travel, what local activities are happening in your area, um, and then you can go start to look at profiles. Um, you can do this as long as you want. 
you will not be able to see any names and you will not be able to see any photos until you have verified your identity. Um, but we do allow you to see a lot so that you can, you know, dip your toe in, see what you think, and if you want to, you know, uh, engage and be a part of it. And at that point, we ask you to verify your identity. Um, but before that, you can, you're more than welcome to go to local events and activities to comment on them, um, things like that. So we, we try to make it pretty open. Okay, Marcy. So I've got to ask you this question. How is Stitch different, let's say, from online dating? Stitch is very different from online dating. Um, basically, we put no pressure on marriage or romance. That's not what we offer. Mm -hmm. We do allow you to seek both romantic and or non-romantic companionship with either gender. Mm -hmm. And the profiles that you'll see in your queue you know, will be in your search settings and you will be in theirs. So we do have that aspect, which is um, what, you know, the current apps are doing like Tinder and Hinge, where it's mutually um, agreed upon to communicate. So, you know, you click, yes, I'm interested. No, I'm not interested. And you look at each profile one at a time. So that's for the real one-to-one -one intense connection. And that part of it would be similar to dating sites. But again, we don't use the word marriage. It's really about companionship. We also focus when it comes to your profile on your common interests. So we have you do a minimum number of the interests in your life that you love, and you have to do a minimum number of, of words and things you have to fill out. Um, we don't focus on the photos. Um, we just require one. We also um, do not, and this is a big difference um, from dating sites, display your age. We don't display ages. We don't display race. We don't have any of those filters. Um, the biggest one being age, because even though we're exclusively for adults over 50, um, age is something that people love to judge each other on mm -hmm. and people feel really insecure about their age. And because age is this malleable thing, it's changing so much. You know, a 60 year old today is not what a 60 year old was 20 years ago. An 80 year old today could be running marathons and that 80 year old wants to run marathons with a companion. And if that companion is 60, like who cares? And our users that told us on dating sites, they felt really self-conscious that they had to lie about their age. So you end up missing each other because mm -hmm. if you have an age filter for say ages 60 to 70, and there's someone that could really be great for you, but they lied about their age to be 55, you'll miss each other. Yeah. So we've decided to take that out. Um, and some people, you know, have definitely pushed back, but generally they're really happy about that. We have one couple who said they never would have met had they been allowed to have those age filters that they had on dating sites because the woman was two years older than the man and he wasn't looking for older women. But they are absolutely so happy together and so happy that Stitch, you know, didn't allow for that kind of filter. So that's how one of the ways we're different. Um, again, we also have group activities, which is really, really popular and, and other sites don't have that are dating sites. So any verified member can suggest um, something they'd like to do. Might be something they already do, like tennis, um, or it could be an upcoming speaker series, a concert. They can post it, and all the local members will be notified, and they can um, use our site to coordinate going to do that together. Um, some people are just much more comfortable meeting in groups. So that's been really popular. And then, again, travel opportunities are something dating sites don't offer. Travel would be the biggest pain point when you're retired and you expect that you're going to go to all of these places. When you're partnerless, that becomes a lot more difficult. It becomes a lot more expensive. Mm -hmm. So we want to let our, our members get together, groups of 10 or 20, and travel together so that they can save money and share a room or cabin and also have the ability to dialogue about where they'd like to go. So we're very, very different from typical dating sites, um, mm -hmm. right? The, the biggest thing being our verification requirement. Okay. Now, in the wake of the uh, Ashley Madison uh, scandal, I mean, uh, this next question, can, <laughs> yeah. can I join Stitch if I'm married? I mean, and if you, oh, can you? First of all, before I <laughs> That's a great question. So technically, yes, you can. And we actually encourage anyone that's married to sign up as long as they have on their profile that they are seeking non-romantic companionship. Uh -huh. So that's really important. Now, what we do, which other sites don't, is if somebody reports a, a profile saying this person, you know, is married, I talk to them on the phone, um, then we will have to, you know, talk to that person, make them switch over to non-romantic, activate their profile. But we find that our, our community really in, encourages honesty, and most people that are married say it very clearly in their profile. They say, I'm happily married. I'm here to literally find a downhill skiing companion. 
um, you know, so we haven't had too much of an issue with that. Well, that's good to hear because, again, in the, in the, in the wake of all of <laughs> yeah, that. Yeah, landed them in some hot water. Yeah, exactly. Uh, yeah, no, it's true. And actually, Madison Mars and, and the other dating sites also really encourage anonymity. You know, like you can go on there and be whoever you want. You can, you know, your username can be like Pinky Lips 2. You know, on Stitch, okay. we really force you to put your first name. Um, you know, it says where you are. Like there isn't that, that shield to have. So you can't get away with that nonsense, if that makes sense. Well, you know, anonymity, people find a lot of uh, security in anonymity. And if you take that away, which sounds like you want, what you really want to do, in, in, in deference to truth, uh, uh, so all of your members can feel confident that to the, the people they're talking to are, in fact, who they say they are. And I think that that's really important. Yes. I think. Thanks. Yeah, that's been the feedback. They said, you know, I just want to meet like-minded, honest people. I want them to be who they say they are. And that's why we have these strict verification requirements, which, are, you know, obviously create a barrier to entry for some people, but they allow us to create a very honest and trusting community as well, which is more important right now. Well, if it's if it's causing a barrier for some people, maybe those are the people to whom you should have barriers. I mean, you know. <laughs> right, right. Absolutely. Some of them, yeah, and some of them, you know, it's, it's honestly, I get it. They say they don't want to provide last for social or you know, the, um, their address or, you know, the personal information we ask to verify their identity um, through really secure third parties. And I get that. So we do feel for them. And so we're trying to think of innovative ways that we can truly verify because, you know, our biggest concern is scammers. So scammers like to do their damage from behind their computer. So typically, um, you know, a scammer won't show up to an activity or event, mm -hmm. right? They can't. So, um, you know, we're allowing people to show up to an activity. If there's a Stitch ambassador or Stitch staff member there, they can verify in person, you know, trying to, to create more ways for them to do that safely. Do you have any success stories that you can share with us? Uh, uh, people have met on Stitch, and, and I'm not saying that they've gotten married, but I'm just saying some they found some really great companions. Maybe, maybe a nice meetup or something like that? Give, give us anything like that? Sure, absolutely. Um, so the couple I mentioned earlier, Russell and Marie, they're really f fantastic, interesting people. And they, um, again, would not have met if, and, and if they hadn't, you know, not if they hadn't had the lack of filter. And Russell had told me, and he's like, look, Marcy, I really hated Stitch at the beginning. I don't like how you made me look at one profile at a time. I just wanted to look at a bunch, <laughs> you know, and you didn't let me filter by age and, and, all, and it was really frustrating for me. He's like, because I had been on you know, OkCupid and all these other sites. He's like, but you forced me. You forced me to read through this whole profile before I could move on. And he said, you know, I said yes to a bunch of women I probably never would have chosen in a bar. Mm -hmm. And one particular one happened to be Marie. She had the same story. She never would have chosen him out of her group. They're very different. I think he's like a motorcycle guy. And she's more of like a, an intellectual. I mean, not that he's not, but yeah. I don't know. That's how they described it. Uh -huh. And... Um, they met up their first date and um you know he said that again he just you know fell in love with her personality and and, and she didn't look any yet old at all even though she was two years older than him and you know he felt terrible for having those judgments and, and he's, he's also just a great guy and and you know now they've just hit it off and their friends make fun of him because they're like you guys are such an odd couple but it works you know because you're looking for something different at this time you know um and that's a really beautiful story. Um, we've had another couple, romantic couple, Carol and Doug, who actually, um, they didn't have a lot of people in their communities yet because we're so new. One of them's in Central Florida, the other's in Iowa. So they had a greater distance setting and they started talking and they really hit it off. You know, again, they normally wouldn't have ever done that, but Stitch said, look, you gotta increase your distance setting. And now they're also in a long distance relationship, have visited each other several times, gone to Vegas, they're awesome. Um, so those are the more romantic stories, but what I actually enjoy more are the non-romantic stories. Those are the ones that I really love. Um, okay. So there's a couple of women in San Francisco who um, went on Stitch, and they had both had this very niche interest in uh, live venue jazz concerts, small live venue jazz concerts. Um, and they noticed that on each other's profiles. They stitched, so they both said they were interested in one another and um, started going off and going to these concerts together. And they used to are really close friends, having a great time. Um, another woman in, I think she was in Fremont. She also, um, she came to our, one of our parties or lunch party, met a couple women, you know, she was looking for a man, but she met a couple women that live in her neighborhood 
and she was floored and so excited. And now they've been doing these little like dinner dates and things on a weekly basis. You know, um, really, really, really great stuff. Um, this is why we do what we do every day. You know, if we can help make those connections and everything's really worth it. Sounds like Real it. quick, and I would, you know, and I completely understand a lot of websites don't share this kind of information, but do you have uh, any kind of general breakdown of male to female? Because especially with, you know, traditional dating sites, it's kind of been skewed one way. And, you know, for, for men, it's very discouraging. But something like, uh, but I could see a service like this actually having a much better ratio. It's interesting you ask. Um, it is the opposite, actually, of traditional dating sites. There are far less men in this pool than women. We have about a 60-40, 60, 60% um, 60 female, 40% male. Um, but, you know, that in itself is a hard ratio to keep. Um, the men, um, so there's a few reasons why generally um, at this age, in this age group, there are fewer men than women. Um, and it's harder to get men than it is women. Um, the first reason is because men do die younger. Um, they have shorter lifespans and there are just physically less of them. Um, and the second reason is that a lot of these men, um, not the majority at all, but just a little chunk of them are looking for women in their 20s, 30s, you know. Kind right. of, and we are, make it very clear we don't offer that. And we don't have any people that age on our site. Um, and all the other senior sites, funnily enough, do have women those that age, young women and young men. They don't have any age barriers, even though they market themselves as 15 over. So uh, we don't cater to that group. So we lose that chunk. So for us, yeah, the ratio is always going to be more women. Which really isn't a bad thing. I mean, you know, uh, for uh, if, if anyone has ever used a dating site as a male, it's, you know, the ratio is always not very flattering to men, but I guess, hey, you know, you get older, you kind of get more valuable as a guy, and that's and that's nice. You do. <laughs> <laughs> you do. So all the men out there, get on Stitch. We've got some amazing, amazing women. I think you'll be pleasantly surprised. Mm. So tell us a little bit more uh, here. Uh, how, how does someone, uh, I mean, where, where is Stitch currently available right now? So Stitch is currently available anywhere. Um, you know, we are um, a website, so you can sign up globally. Um, what we will tell you is if there aren't enough people in your area, you know, you'll have to extend your distance settings. Our most, I would say our most, you know, robust happening active markets are LA, San Francisco Bay Area, New York Tri-State Area, and Sydney, Australia. Wow. That is but we are putting efforts into growing in Florida, Arizona, Chicago, D.C. area, Texas, um, and uh, Central Coast Australia, and a couple other places, the U.K. Okay, and uh, again, all begins by going to the website uh, and, and, uh, and, and start the process. Now, um, is the platform independent, or what platforms does such support, Marcy? So Stitch is a, right now we have an HTML desktop app. So that, you know, supports any browser. Mm -hmm. um, and so you can use it on your iPad or your iPhone, you know, within the browser. We've been in the middle of submitting our app to the Apple Store. We're just having a little pushback, unfortunately, for some, some things that have to do with our verification. Mm -hmm. So that the app should be out within the next few weeks, if not sooner. Mm -hmm. um, half of our users are using us on mobile. So we knew a while ago we needed to get that app out. Now you mentioned some fairly uh, distant places, and which I think would calls up the question about languages. Uh, um, if people speak different languages, what what languages does Stitch support? So the lang so that's true. We only support English right now. So um, even though we're in Australia, the Australians do use the United States English. Um, well, same with the people in the UK. I don't know about um, that. You, so, is, you ever hear you ever hear someone in Australia talk? You have to go. What was that? No. <laughs> yes, you're right. English. No, you're, you're totally you're totally right. So they they are just being nice to us and using our app, even though we talk funny to them. Um, totally. I used to live in Australia, so um, which is how, why we have a presence there. Mm -hmm. But um, yeah, they they're being patient with us um, because unfortunately localization is really expensive, yeah. and we are in our early days. Um, so we'll get there. We're definitely, Spanish will probably be next. 
and if, we'll do a little localizing, of course, for Australia, since, since we have natives on the team that can just do that our, you know, ourselves. But then we have to create another version of it, et cetera, et cetera. Now, that, that makes a lot of sense. Um, so, uh, all right. So, so how much does, does Stitch cost anything to join? And if so, how much is it? So Stitch does cost money. You know, shocking, I know. But yeah. what I love about boomers and seniors is they're such rational people. They're such rational consumers. And unlike stupid millennials like me, um, they don't expect everything to be free and they understand that, you know, it costs money to keep the lights on. So um, we are a paid application. Um, we charge a one-time $10 fee for verifying your identity. Mm -hmm. And that's only because it costs us money mm -hmm. um, through the third parties we use or the time we, you know, we'll take 20 minutes scouring the internet to make sure this person is who they say they are. Mm -hmm. um, if you upgrade to a premium membership, then that verification is free. And the premium membership is very simple. It's $60 for the year. So that's $5 a month. And we think it's, it's pretty reasonable given that we're new. Um, and then it encourages people to stay with us, be a part of our community, stay on for a year. Um, we don't want people just coming in, looking around and leaving. We really want to build a good community. Well, is, and is that, I think that's the mission here. Uh, when you get something for free, it's it's worth what you paid for it. I guess uh, that's sometimes a perspective. If you're gonna well, it, well, when it's free, that you you remove one little barrier, and that you know uh, it seems like you guys are really going for you know active verification and you know really trying to keep the the spam profiles and you know all all of the uh, it, because really, I also assume that are some of these barriers kind of set up because you know uh, as much as we love them. The baby boomers tend to be the targets of identity theft, fraud, and, and that kind of thing online. Oh, a thousand percent. That's why they're set up. Like, they are the targets. Those scammers, I mean, we spend a lot of our day, you know, unapproving and getting rid of scammers that are trying to get into our site. They are after these people, like white on rice, and they are um, told, and they would trick us too, but they just don't target young people. They want the widowers, the divorcees, they want the vulnerable people. And they're getting smarter and smarter. It's unbelievable what they can come up with. Um, sometimes they even hire con artists in this country to actually go on the date and go out with those people, uh, steal their checkbook while they're in the bathroom. I mean, it's really sick. Um, so that's the main reason we have verification because uh, on dating sites, when you're over 50, when you sign up, no matter what happens, you're going to get so many messages from scammers. You're going to get people asking for green cards. You're going to get... You know, attractive wow. men. You know, asking you for money, and and even yeah. if you don't, Marcy, we got fall we, victim. We yeah. we got to take a little break, and then we'll come back. I'm sorry to cut you off. Oh, no you're, li you're listening to the Computer America Show. Uh, Stitch is here with us. We'll be right back. Stay with us. Sometimes disaster strikes. Data can be lost due to many different reasons: accidental reformatting, power spikes, virus attacks. Zero Assumption Recovery provides a suite of highly effective and thorough data recovery software for Windows operating systems. ZA is suitable for home users and small businesses who need a powerful data recovery solution for Windows and Linux file systems. Go to z-a-recovery.com. Sometimes, disaster strikes. Data can be lost due to many different reasons. Accidental reformatting, power spikes, virus attacks. Zero Assumption Recovery provides a suite of highly effective and thorough data recovery software for Windows operating systems. ZA is suitable for home users and small businesses who need a powerful data recovery solution for Windows and Linux file systems. Go to z-a-recovery.com. Hi, this is Craig Crossman, host of the Computer America Show. You have important meetings to schedule, your company's getting ready for its IPO, and you're in charge of the PTA fundraiser this month. So how do you coordinate everyone to be available at the same time? Are you still using emails, phone calls, even text messages to schedule meetings with a group of people? How's that working out for you? <laughs> Not so great, huh? It's a fact that every day, millions of people suffer from scheduling headaches. Well, with Doodle, scheduling meetings with a group of people is quick and easy. With Doodle, you can...
easily propose available times to each member. Each one checks off the times that they are available, and then you simply pick the time that works best for the group, all in an easy-to-read display that integrates with your existing calendar. Nothing could be more simple. Give Doodle a try for free, and like millions of Doodle users, you'll truly see how easy it is to find the perfect date and time for all your meetings. That's www.doodle.com. And make it 350 for 25 minutes. Oh, hi, it's Marty Winston with a news tips bulletin review for Computer America. This time, a 24 port gigabit switch from TrentNet with PoE Plus. That's a flavor of power over Ethernet. So, the same cable the networks also powers that supports devices that need a little more power, but even better, it more tightly constrains the delivered voltage range, which can mean more operational stability. With 24 ports and a total 370 watt power allowance, it handles everything. One little bit of a bother with this unit is that taming that power supply in a 1U rack mount means it has a fan that sounds a little bit like a hairdryer motor, but that's a tiny trade-off. Bottom line, the TrendNet TPE TG240G 24-port PoE Plus Gigabit Switch is a one-piece solution to two dozen needs. Marty Winston with News Tips Bulletin for Computer America. <laughs> Welcome back to the Computer America Show. 33 minutes past the hour. And thank you, Marty Winston, for that news tip bulletin review. Yeah. And we are here with uh, Marcy Rogo, who is the co-founder of Stitch.net. And Stitch.net is a dating site for a, a companion site. Not, not a dating, I'm sorry. Companion site. Very clear distinction. Uh, for people over 50. And you know, right before the break, we uh, Marcy was just telling us that these paywalls are there, you know, A, to keep the lights on and B, as deterrence for scammers and other types of profiles that really you don't want on there, especially the people who are perhaps more vulnerable because you know they don't know that, hey, there's someone out there who's in a completely different country, completely different uh, you know, part of the world, and they're asking you for money and you know, they might be willing to give it. And that's you know obviously a problem. So you know that, and this is all part of the sign-up process, which we haven't really talked about yet. So I thought you could go into that a little bit because it sounds like it's a little bit more complicated than put in a name, put in an email, and you're off to the races. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it is a little more complicated. It's it's there's just multiple steps. Um, the the initial process is to put your name and email. Um, then you will get uh, put into a few screens that just kind of explain what we're about ask you for your first name, and then there's a screen that asks you for the basics of your profile, very basics. Um, you know, what is the, the question that's most important on everyone's profile, which is mandatory, asks you, what is one thing that you've been wanting to do but don't have someone to do it with? Very simple question, very unique, and it's really important because that's how we really, um, how our, our algorithm matches people. Mm -hmm. We ask you for one photograph, which you can't upload later, and we ask you for your first name. And that's it. And then at that point, you can go searching around. So we don't stop you. We really want you to get a feel for what Stitch is about. You're just restricted. So you cannot browse profiles until your profile has more content because it's, you know, people really want to read more about you. And when you do, you can look at the profiles, but you won't be able to see their names or photos until you verify your identity. Then, um, but before all that, you can still go and look at our events and activities. You can see what people are talking about. You can even comment yourself. Um, that's a very free and open atmosphere because, again, our, uh, we're not worried about scammers showing up at an event or activity. They do not do that because they are almost always in a different country. Um, and then there's the travel section where people are posting the places they'd like to go to. You can go ahead and there. You can go into our community section and, again, you know, do that. What you really cannot do which is the big risk, is directly communicate with any other member until you have verified your identity. You cannot message back and forth. You cannot have that direct private communication because that is where the scammers hit. So um, by asking you to verify, we, we again cover our costs, but also that credit card information is really telling. Most scammers will, will use a stolen credit card and almost all of them, that credit card is in a different place than we have their computer in. So it's a first really easy way to see if anyone is a scammer for us. And then there's, of course, deeper research we can do. Right. Um, uh, again, all in the name of security, I, I, would, I would think. 
Right. Because it can be a dangerous yeah, world out there. Yeah, it definitely is. It can be a dangerous world out there, <laughs> dating, uh, you know, and, and, and meeting other people. Uh, and I guess that goes to the, you know, the question, is Stitch safe? It's, there's been a movie, the, uh, is it safe? Now, is, is Stitch safe? I mean, um, obviously, you seem to be going to every... Um, uh, much, much further lengths than any other dating site that I've definitely seen. Yeah, and, and we are, and it, because it's a real threat. I mean, last year, almost $100 million was stolen in, in online romance scams in the U.S., $25 million in Australia. You know, it's a real actual problem. Um, and we are going to great lengths. However, we are as safe as we can be from, you know, with the control of what our team can do. But, you know, again, these scammers are getting smart. So we always allow our members to report any suspicious activity. And they're so great for our community because they do do that. Um, and most of the time that person hasn't gone through verification, but they still see, oh, this profile is not, you know, good. And so our community helps us that way. Also, we still tell people, do not meet up, you know, at, yeah. at your home. Always meet in a public place. Like, mm. make sure that you, you know, don't see, we have, you know, tons of support articles about being safe because obviously, you know, somebody could just turn into a criminal even though they verify their identity and they seem fine and they're not married. We can't control that, right? right. So we just try to do right by our members by always encouraging them to meet someone public place if they say something odd to you on the phone like come over to my house do not do that do not share your phone number or your email before you've met up in person we actually have a secure phone calling system so that you can use a Twilio integration to call each other and talk on the phone without sharing your that's nice. um, real phone numbers that's nice yes that, 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 that's a nice touch um, now I asked you earlier the question obviously how to stitch compared to free sites so now I'm going to ask you how Stitch compares to paid subscription sites, which is a little closer to what you do. How do you compare? So let's talk about, let's say, Match or eHarmony. These are paid sites. Uh -huh. um, usually they charge between 30 and 50 a month. Um, we, the first thing that we have way better than these paid sites is customer service. Our customer service is serious, and we, are, we answer absolutely every inquiry from our members. We have a phone number that we display on our site, unlike a lot of other sites out there. They are welcome to call us. We will walk them through whatever they need. Um, the, we, we have this, A, because I think it's the right thing to do, but B, because one of the major complaints when we were building Stitch um, about other sites was that they couldn't reach anyone on the on customer service team, that they would get charged without having you know allowed for that, and they would ask for refunds and been told that they can't get them, that there was no one to help them and they felt absolutely helpless against this big company. We never want our members to feel that way. So, you know, if they feel like they were charged and didn't want to have that extra month, whatever it was, we'll refund it. We'll talk them through it. We'll do whatever we can to, to speak to them as a respectful human, you know, who's paying for a service. And I don't really understand how paid services don't offer that. If you're taking someone's money, you should be providing real good customer service. So that's number one. Um, number two, unlike the paid sites, we don't, um, we say what we're going to do. So like our time is owned by match. It's the most well-known dating site for people in their fifties and up. And right. they allow anyone of any age on their site. They also allow scammers on and they just say to their users, it's at your own risk. Uh -huh. You know, like it's up to you to make sure you sit through this because they're just big money making churning machines. Right. Mm -hmm. So they'll take anybody on. I signed up to our time when I was 26 just to see what it what was going on. You know, it's, it's really, um, terrible. And for us, um, even though we need to make money and ultimately we're going to need to, you know, have that money and all that, we know that if we're giving our members what we say we're going to give them, which other sites do not, we will, we will in the end be successful because boomers are very loyal. They're also, um, they definitely, you know, spread word of mouth easily. If they like something, they're going to tell people about it. So we're just trying to do right by them, to be honest with you, which a lot of paid sites do not do. Um, also, we have an annual plan, which is different. We'll be introducing new plans in the future, but as a new site, uh, we thought that was the best option for us. All right, I got to ask you this, Marcy. Uh, and um, obviously, you, you you've you've had experience with this. You are a co-founder of Stitch. What was your motivation? So, you know, I mean, what made you decide? You know we need to set up something like this. Did you have a bad experience on it? Or did you know a person who had a bad experience or, or you just felt that this is something that needed to be done? I mean, what was your motivation in creating Stitch or uh, in co-founding it? Sure. Um, so I've always grown up having, um, 
a very serious passion against ageists. I think that our country stereotypes and treats our elders like trash mm-hmm. when they're really the most beloved members of our society. Now, of course, such as for boomers and, and seniors and elders, but just the general lack of ignorance about aging and mm-hmm. how tech specifically chooses to ignore this audience. Mm-hmm. There's so much they need and there's so many ways to help them mm-hmm. that could be you know, done by technology. But I think that young people in tech uh, tend to only think about themselves, which is fair. Mm-hmm. Nobody wants to think about their own mortality. But for me, um, I've always kind of thought about this group. And when I was in my MBA, um, I decided that I would try to see what's going on in the aging space professionally. Mm -hmm. I worked at a senior living facility Mm -hmm. um, down the road and I noticed this social isolation issue that all of the people that came in here and and mind you, this was like a four seasons hotel, this place. It was nice. It was like, I think you had to have like a million dollars in cash just to get your off the wait list. Um, And yet these people were miserable. They didn't know anyone. They just moved there. They, you know, it's obviously very awkward to go room to room and tell people what you like to do. But a lot of them I could see were doing the same things in their rooms. And if they just had known that, they they would have been maybe walking each day, you know, definitely put off their their death, you know, by just getting out of the room. It takes that little bit, you know, and I thought, God, this is crazy. There's got to be something out there that's helping this. Maybe there's like a private Facebook for retirement communities. I looked everywhere, couldn't find one. So I tried to build one myself. Um... You know, and that was kind of phase one. And phase three, now t- today, is Stitch. Um, people really wanted companionship, they had told me over the years. And that, you know, I had been, and they were all using online dating because they said, I don't know where else to go, but I hate this. I hate online dating. Mm-hmm. I, also using online dating sites, completely feel their pain. <laughs> totally get it. This, the games that are played, the fake people, the weirdos, the creeps, mm-hmm. it's a very yucky process Mm -hmm. um but i realized that what i was looking for was different because i would like to you know marry someone have children but all the people i was working with you know said i'm looking for something a little different Mm -hmm. you know and this is what it is and this is why i don't like online dating there's so much pressure for marriage and this and that and you know hearing these stories over and over i realized you know if i wasn't going to be the one to do this no one was i mean or it could be years you know, and, and being a young person in tech, I had the, the tools at my disposal and I mm-hmm. met this man, Andrew Dowling, who was trying to solve social isolation for elders and their families. And we both had the same outlook on it. And we never, we never dreamed of starting a dating site. That was definitely not what Andrew and I got into this for. Mm-hmm. But what we realized in the end was that we could solve the problem of social isolation through offering romance as an option, among other things, really offering companionship. Right. So that's why we launched Stitch. Make, make it so. And where'd you come up with the name, Stitch? That was kind of interesting. How did you come up with that? <laughs> we get asked that a lot. So um, we had a prior product, the, the Social Isolation for Elders, called Tapestry, because it was about weaving families together. And mm-hmm. at the time, we were keeping that on as well. So Stitch was a sister product. So we wanted it to sound like that, mm-hmm. but, you know, about weaving people together. So mm-hmm. Stitch was kind of the the other alternative and the url.net was available so we we went ahead and 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 took it although we do get mixed feedback about it but you know it's hard these days to find a name that people can spell and repeat um yeah. you know that's available yeah it is uh, when i first heard it the last when i first heard stitch the last thing i thought was this is going to be either it's going to be a medical site or or you know, something along that i didn't think it was going to be a companionship website uh, but you know, I know, I know. It's it's kind of funny. I mean, <laughs> well, a lot of people on our site like to do, you know, um, embroidery and, and yarn and yarn and, and quilting, you know, that kind of stuff, and quilting. So, yeah. you know, they yeah. they come across her sometimes accidentally because they're looking for their quilting website. That's and it. Then they end up signing up for Stitch. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> exactly. Well, uh, listen. Uh, anything else you want to tell our listeners, uh, uh, Marcy, uh, before we uh, uh, say uh, good afternoon? Uh, I mean, it's extremely, extremely uh, interesting website, and we certainly encourage all of our listeners uh, in that age range uh, certainly to check it out. Uh, and of course, you can go to the website at stitch.net, s-t-i-t-c-h.net. We also have it on our website at computeramerica.com. Just go there; we have a link to the stitch.net website too. So, yeah, anything else that you might want to mention that we haven't covered? No, I just want to thank you and I want to encourage, you know, anyone out there that knows someone that that's lonely or, or, you know, your mom, your grandmother, your friend, you know, please, you know, send them to Stitch. We're trying to grow and, um, you know, we're here and if 
any questions, you can email us anytime at hello at stitch.net. Mm -hmm. um, we'd love to be there. We'd love to help you. And just thank you for this opportunity. Marcy, thank you so much for being with us here. And, and of course, best of luck to you on your efforts at Stitch. And uh, hope, uh, hope you have a very a successful uh, uh, endeavor uh, with this. Okay? Thank you. Thank you both so much. All right, Marcy. Take care. Have a, have a good day. Bye-bye. Bye. Okay. Bye. Bye. All right. There you go. Uh, Stitch.com. Uh, Oh, dot net, excuse me. Dot net, stitch.net. Yes, it is, stitch.net. And you can uh, try that for yourself. Uh, you're a little too young for stitch.net, Ben. You uh, have... Yeah, but so are you, 38. <laughs> I mean, you know, another couple of years. That's right. I had to have a few more years. Maybe you'll grow into it. Yeah. Besides, I'm happily married. So <laughs> It's not about marriage. It's about companionship. There's yeah, a difference. There's, yeah. we, we made that distinction very clear. There it is. There it is. Okay. All right, uh, uh, we're again. Uh, we're gonna. I just want to mention our contest, which is coming up uh, tomorrow. Uh, if you have not signed up for our social media contest, you really need to do so. Head over com to computeramerica.com. You'll under the um, uh, interact pull down menu. Just hover over that, and you'll see it says social media contest. Just select that, and you can see all the different social media places that Computer America participates. Uh, there's Facebook, there's YouTube, Twitter, Pinterest, Google+. Um, check out each one. Each one is a link to, you know, for example, it takes you to facebook.com slash Computer America. Just click on the logo there. Uh, like our page. That's all you have to do. And now you have an entry every single week. You only have to do it once. And then from then, every single week, you have one entry. If you go to our YouTube page, which is also there, and you subscribe to our YouTube feed, now you have two entries into our social media contest every single week forever. Go to the Twitter link and follow our Twitter um, page, and then you'll have three uh, per week and so on and so forth. So that's how it is. You just do one time, and the more that you check it out, the more, the more uh, entries you'll have on a weekly basis. And uh, we're giving away the Logitech MX Anywhere 2 wireless mouse. This is a beautiful mouse. It's valued at $80. Um, it, it's a mobile mouse that performs anywhere it's actually really pretty to look at um it's compact it has a dual wireless connection uh you can go uh, connect to windows mac uh either via their uh, pico unifying receiver or via bluetooth smart wireless technology it works with both you can easily switch between three different devices they have their easy switch technology it's a little button on the bottom of the mouse you just press that you can see three little LEDs you can you can uh, between three different computers it's got the hyper fast scroll technology and also it has the dark field technology it means you can use it on virtually any surface even glass uh, it's an amazing mouse works with right or left hand it's ambidextrous and again valued at eighty dollars we'll give that way tomorrow in the second hour and you know and if you sign up at our social media uh, contest we, we could be calling your name it could be just that simple, right? And trust me when I say you have a lot better chance of winning this than at the lottery. <laughs> okay, so. No doubt, no doubt. No doubt. So head over to Computer America. The prize is a little bit smaller, though, but still. <laughs> exactly. I don't think anyone's going to retire off of their new MX Anywhere 2 mouse. So. No, no one's retire, but certainly they'll have a lot of fun with it. And uh, For sure. And even if you don't win one, you should check it out. But I mean, like, you know, no one's ever went into work the next day or, you know, sent us the story of I went into my boss's office the day after I won my prize, <laughs> threw, threw my letter of, res my letter of re resignation on his desk and said, I got a mouse. I can go anywhere. I don't need this. And just <laughs> stormed out of the office. No, that doesn't happen. But, hey, you get a cool mouse. Yes, you did. Okay. So, uh, again, check it out at ComputerAmerica.com or social media. Kind of well, you're there. Just check out all the really cool things we have. Uh, but our, at our website, uh, we have, under the press releases, news, and info, uh, you can see all the different things we do. We have our show notes. Uh, our guest calendar is there, so you can see who's going to be on the show for the entire month and months ahead. You can see that. Uh, we have our show archives page there, all the different places that you can listen to Computer America. We have our top tech awards, our tech news aggregator. Uh, all of that is there at ComputerAmerica.com. So just take a moment and check it out. Okay. All right, uh, um, I think we have time to do a few news stories, so why don't we just do some, uh, some computer news? Yeah, we'll let it bleed over into the second hour. All right, we'll do that. So let's just do this. Today's computer and technology news is brought to you by Slimware Utilities, the official optimization software of Computer America. You can visit them at slimwareutilities.com to clean 
speed up, and optimize your Windows system. SlimwayUtilities.com. And remember, it works now with Windows 10. Exactly. So I know so many of you now have it. SlimwayUtilities.com. Check it out. Use it. You'll be happy. You'll thank us for it. Yep. So uh, thank you for joining us for another new segment. That's one of my personal favorite because we get to talk about not just a great service or product that you know that we get to someone here to represent, but we get to just talk about whatever we want involving science, technology, and just whatever happens to be in the media that day. Mm -hmm. And one of those things that was in the media today was uh, – by stitch.net is uh, this the Oculus VR had a uh, keynote today. Uh -huh. Hopefully, a lot of you caught it. It was live streaming on Twitch, which is where I saw it. And it, uh, you know, I, I was only able to catch about an hour of it. They broke for lunch, I guess, right before the show started. So, you know, I kind of had to stop watching there. But I did catch about an hour of it, and it was all very cool stuff. So without further ado, I'm pulling this from Engadget because they did a nice little as they were doing it right up. So they were kind of hitting the, the highlights and you could actually like refresh the page over at Engadget and like a new paragraph would pop up whenever something new was said. Engadget is really good on doing that. Uh, I've seen them do it in many different conferences like the Apple, the as right. you refresh the page, they do it moment by moment. They keep updating it. Yes. Mm -hmm. Right. They they I, I don't know what kind of wizardry involves in that, but it's a very nice little feature that they have going on there. So this one from Richard Lawler, and it's uh, Oculus VR is getting Twitch streaming soon and Netflix today. Hmm. So, yeah, it's uh, at the Oculus Connect 2, which was their second uh, press event. Uh, the virtual reality company just announced that it's, going, that it's getting a number of video services streaming to virtual reality with the biggest being Netflix, is going to launch an app in about 20 minutes. But uh, Twitch, Hulu, and Vimeo are, and more are going to see, uh, are going to be right behind it. Vimeo, I think, is, is going to be one of the big players here because uh, Twitch is great, you know, that has a lot of, uh, a lot of different streamers having a lot of different entertaining channels. Mm -hmm. And Netflix and Hulu are very well known, and they're going to have different, uh, you know, D different shows and different movies that a lot of people traditionally enjoy. But I think Vimeo is going to be a very, very big player in virtual reality because it's one of the best places outside of YouTube. And you know, for anyone out there who hasn't used Vimeo, it's a great place to upload your video and share it with people. So you know, by, by having Vimeo in there, you're, you're gonna ha you're you're going to get a lot more uh, user created content. More so than YouTube. I, yeah, I really think so because YouTube is is huge. YouTube is massive, and sometimes things get lost in the shuffle in there because you know they're between eight year olds uploading videos of them singing in their room, and mm. between you know uh, fifty year olds going on political rants and everything in between. YouTube kind of gets cluttered. Where Vimeo, that's where a lot of independent uh, film makers mm. actually go to release their footage. You know, yes, it might be on YouTube as well, but Vimeo is really the first place that a lot of people go to, you know, to do shorts, to do videos. And in this whole new world of 3D videos, I feel like the the big players really won't get into it until a couple of months down the road, you know, and, and they won't even get into it that much. Like Disney invested, what was it, 65 million the other day yeah. into three, 360 degree video. Yeah. And that's great and all, but we won't see the fruits of that for another year or two. So I think Vimeo and user-created content, that's going to be the best place to find 360-degree video, which is something that will ideally be in virtual reality. Like, you're going to like you're gonna want virtual reality to see 360-degree video. So, yeah. And, uh, you know, getting back to the article, uh, we didn't get a ton of details on the experience, but we expect to see something like the uh, current Oculus Cinema. By the way, they have a few pictures here up in the article. It's a very nice furnished apartment looking kind of place, and there are posters hanging on the wall. And you can actually go and select the posters, and those posters will pull up a massive TV in front of you, and you can then watch that, you know, whatever you're looking at. So, uh, very, very cool. And of course, in virtual reality, every screen is a curved screen. No need to shell out another $3,000. Mm -hmm. So, you know, uh, 
where viewers can watch movies in a virtual theater. For the Twitch app, viewers will be able to chat and comment on gaming streams they're watching as well. Wow. Uh, the slide at the event also show logos for Facebook, obviously, uh, Fox, Lionsgate, and even TiVo. Mm. That'd be cool if you could stream TiVo to your virtual reality. That would be kind of neat. Yes, it would. Nice little tie into the cable companies. So, uh, you know, Hulu provided some details and pictures for its app, promising to stream both its existing 2D content and short form stuff built for VR. So, first up for VR is a short film. It's making uh, it, it's making with Rocket Jump and Lionsgate called the Big One. For viewing environments, it's building areas based on shows like the uh, like its own original Difficult People and Seinfeld. Uh, Hulu's VR experience is coming out this fall, but an exact uh, but an exact release date and list of device availability is still to be announced. And I I, I kind of like that because they're going to have quote unquote theaters that you watch them in, and you know it could be like a furnished modern apartment, it could be this, it could be that, but for specific episodes, you know you have it up on the screen, but you know kind of like the the extra stuff around there, you could have you know. If you've ever seen an episode of Seinfeld, you know he kind of starts and ends in a comedy club, you know, yeah. every episode. So maybe the surrounding environment around that, you know, or around that screen could be like you're sitting in a comedy club. You know, it, it, it's it's immersion to a different level. Yeah. As to whether that's good or whether that's worthwhile, we don't know because, you know, as consumers, we really haven't had a chance to try this out yet. But it's uh, it's something different. It certainly, and it certainly appears to be. Just looking at some of the slides here on the news story. Again, if you're watching this, if you happen to be watching the show, you can see Ben's displaying some of the things uh, from right. this story. Right. And, uh, and and just to wrap this up really quickly, because we have about one more minute left. But yeah, uh, Facebook, Fox, Lionsgate, Twitch, TiVo, Vimeo, Hulu, Netflix, all announced that they're going to have apps on which you can play you know, or on which you can enjoy content through virtual reality, or at least the Oculus. And then, and then, of course, uh, my favorite is going to be Twitch, where you know it kind of shows any kind of streamer, and all these are going to be in a theater type setting. So you could be essentially watching Twitch.tv in what amounts to a theater sized screen strapped to your face. Yeah, because that's what you get with the virtual reality. And yeah, I think when we come back, uh, we should talk about uh, some of the other stuff I saw during the keynote because uh, this was just the tip of the iceberg and what Oculus VR is really planning. Oh, there's more. Okay. Of course, of course. Okay. All right. Well, uh, we'll come back to that. Again, we're, we're at the top of the hour break, and then we'll uh, uh, come right back. At the top of the hour break, we really have no commercial messages. We just uh, play a... a just, just, just a nice little differentiation so that if someone wants to listen to the first or the second hour... There you go. That makes this easier. All right. You're listening to the Computer America Show. Uh, ben and I are doing computer and technology news brought to you by Slimware Utility is the official optimization software of Computer America. Uh, we just finished our interview with Stitch, uh, Marcy Rogo. Uh, you can listen to that, too, in the archives. Uh, but, again, we're just going to pause for a uh, couple of moments, and then we'll be back with Hour 2 of the Computer America Show. Please stay with us. We'll be right back. Broadcasting live, it's the only national radio talk show on computers to air every weeknight, Computer America, hosted by national columnist Craig Crossman. The first hour's behind us, but there's still more of tech news, tech talk, and your phone calls. We're being beamed nationwide at ComputerAmerica.com. You got computer problems? Bring them on. You're listening to Computer America. Computers run the world, and we run computers. Call us or send us an email to live at ComputerAmerica.com. Hello and welcome into Hour 2 of the nation's longest-running, nationally syndicated radio talk show on computers. This is the Computer America Show, and I'm your host, Craig Crossman. And I'm your co-host, Ben. And uh, we just had our first hour guest uh, from Stitch, uh, Marcy Rogo, co-founder of Stitch, basically a, a website you can go to meet companions for, uh, for, for older uh, the older generation, I guess. Is that the best way to say it? Yeah. yeah. And if you miss any portion of it, you can listen more to More seasoned individuals. Yes, more, more knowledgeable, more, more worldly. There uh, you go. Exactly. Um, and if you missed it, you can go back to ComputerAmerica.com and just go to our archives page. It's under the archives pull-down menu. And you can download it any way you want. You can go to iTunes, carries the show. 
Um, the uh, Blog Talk Radio uh, Network carries the show. Uh, we have also two new ones. We have Stitcher and SoundCloud now carry the full two-hour episode of each uh, daily Computer America show. And again, it's all at ComputerAmerica.com. So if you want to, you can uh, check it out. But as I said, in the meantime, we are doing computer technology news, uh, brought to you by Slimware Utilities. And uh, we were still doing this story. You had a few things more you want to talk about. Oculus uh, VR uh, is getting Twitch streaming soon and Netflix today. And uh, you, were you were able to watch part of the keynote, of course, then we had to go on the air. So, But uh, you're following Engadget's moment-by-moment -moment accounting on their website. And uh, what else did you want to talk about? Well, yeah, some of the other highlights were, of course, we haven't even talked about the date it was released and the price point. Okay. So that's obviously a big thing, and that it will be it will be released to everyone in November. So, you know, fully expected by Black Friday, it will be already out and on the shelves and hopefully in abundance. And, you know, hey, this, this will be your first chance to actually get a virtual reality headset. So... It's going to be released this November, and the price point is pretty surprising. It's not a full-blown... It, okay, one thing we need to make very clear about virtual reality is, uh, folks, it's not an all-enclosed system. It's not like you strap this thing on and you can walk around the house with the thing strapped to your face. That's not what it's for. It's more of a monitor that you put on your face you know it, that that's essentially it. it's it's essentially a monitor and therefore the price actually came in at under a hundred dollars wow they're, yeah they're, they're hoping uh, they're hoping that it was that it will sell for 99 bucks which again isn't that expensive at all but and, here's the kicker yeah the kicker is you're gonna need some kind of pretty decent hardware to back one of these things up so that's why we're going to talk about this other story here, just scrolling through these different things. And Oculus Ready PC program offers virtual reality rigs for less than $1,000. See, the price just went from $99 to hopefully under $1,000. Okay. So the, uh, the, they said that when the, when the Oculus Rift, and of course this is the, uh, this is the uh, Oculus Ready, whatever, launches in, in uh, 2016, you need minimum specs. These are the minimum specs to run virtual reality. Eight gigs of RAM, which isn't too bad. An Intel i5 processor. So hopefully that's going to be above a 3.4 you know, gigahertz or something like that. And an NVIDIA GTX 970 or an AMD 290. So some of the latest generation graphics cards. You know, 970, I believe they announced a 980 and like a 980 Ti. So... A GTX 970 is gonna run you. I want to say about three hundred fifty dollars. It, it's it's not a cheap uh, graphics card by any means, and most of the system performance that comes out of virtual reality is indeed rendered by the graphics card. So you know these are of course the minimum specs to actually run it in some kind of decent fashion. You're gonna want the best graphics card you can absolutely afford and probably more RAM and definitely a more powerful processor than a simple i5. So, you know, minimum does not mean recommended. Recommended is, is probably still going to run you about a $1,000 gaming computer. Yeah. Well, as you say, not, not a slouch, obviously. Obviously. And, yeah, and, and unfortunately, not a lot of people have a computer with those kinds of specs. Like, I'm, like even mine is kind of lacking a little bit in terms of processing power, and I'm sure yours, Craig, you know, your computer is getting a little long in the tooth. Yours <laughs> couldn't even run that. Yeah. So it's, you know, a, a higher end computer built within the last two years would probably be okay. But anything beyond that and anything below higher end, you're probably going to have to, you know, start saving up, not for the con, you know, not for the headset, because that's only, you know, a hundred bucks, but for the hardware behind it to actually make it run. Mm -hmm. Exactly. So of course, and you know, just uh, kind of going over some other highlights, they didn't. Uh, uh, the the keynote uh, speaker, he was pretty entertaining. He's like, you know, I'm not going to fool anyone here. We didn't uh, create some kind of weird metaverse that you know, that everyone can kind of jump into. We didn't. You know, this isn't going to be the end all say all of virtual reality. This isn't even where we really want it to be yet. 
and they kind of paused for a moment and the whole crowd was, you know, kind of silent, kind of, you know, kind of wondering where he was going with this. And they turned around, threw his arm up, flipped the slide, and he's like, but we got Minecraft. So <laughs> that's something. <laughs> and so, yes, Minecraft for Windows 10 uh, will be coming to the Oculus Rift. So we, we saw some... Uh, we saw some version of that with a HoloLens, which was actually yeah. augmented reality, not virtual reality. Uh-huh. But they are bringing Minecraft to uh, the the Oculus Rift, and it's going to be virtual reality, so completely enclosed. And it's and they're promising to be much more immersive, and you know that that whole thing. So if you enjoy Minecraft, maybe think about enjoying Minecraft in a completely different way, which is Hey, potentially even you know first person as if you were actually trying to jump away from the spiders and the skeletons and the zombies. You never know. That's true. And you know they also announced a couple other things like a classic, uh, you know some, some classic arcade games. I'm sure Galaga, Pac-Man, those kinds of games are coming to this thing called the Oculus Arcade, which you know if you have played any of the old arcade games, it will be a nice little place that you know games that are really at this point considered kind of free. You know, they, they, they're past their time. They're timeless, but they're past their time. And the fact that they were made, you know, way back when, they're now going to be offered on what is some of the oldest technology being offered on some of the newest technology. So, you know, nice little feature. It, think of it kind of like Solitaire being included on Windows computers, you know? Yep, exactly. So there, there's that. And, you know, I'm, I'm trying to think of anything else that they kind of announced. One thing that they did talk about was that something a lot of our correspondents and a lot of other people have been talking about when we discuss virtual reality is that it's a very enclosed system. Like, you you sit down, preferably in a, in a swivel chair, and you strap this thing on your head, you have your two controllers, and you are completely immersed well, I don't think they have smell of vision yet, but you're completely immersed within the game. Like, that's it. And everyone we have on the show is saying, oh, this is going to be the end of people talking to each other. Like, this is so antisocial, this can in no way be a good thing. But one thing they were trying to make abundantly clear during the whole keynote was that this is going to be the... Okay, one phrase that they used was this will be the most social experience you will ever have in a video game. Well, you know, and that's that's a heck of a claim, especially since we had Super League Gaming on last yesterday's show talking about having a social interaction video. Right. So Right, but but this is talking about um I believe the keynote says something along along the lines of you're going to have an avatar and you're going to be in a game and you're going to have motion that is, you know, captured by all the equipment, and it will be displayed, you know, real time to the avatar. And if you are sitting there, you know, playing a game, and you see the avatar, and he's making movements, you know, he has a microphone, so he's talking with his actual voice, and you know, it, it won't be a picture in picture per a, a picture of you, but rather of of an avatar. The announcer said that that was enough to trick people's brains into thinking that this is a real person. Obviously, it's a cartoon avatar, not really a real person, mm-hmm. but between the, the the gestures, the movements, the voice, the everything, you can kind of say, okay, this is an actual person. This isn't just, you know, uh, a, a representation of a person. This is, a, you know, this is them. Yeah. So they said that, and, you know, that, that could be, you know, when, let's say, the avatar hands your avatar something, they could be, 7,000 miles away. But in that game, in that moment, they are right there handing an object to you. And they said that, uh, you know, for, from all their testing and from everyone who has used this kind of technology, they said that was a very personal and social, you know, uh, experience to yeah, them. Exactly. Uh, it kind of boggles the mind that you can have somebody's far away, but make, like, yeah, sense. you know, people can be as far away as possible, but at the same time, you know, they're handing something to you. They're talking to you. They're, you know, helping you do a task. Yeah. It's, it's you know, as close as someone can be as if they were right there next to you, which is, I guess, kind of the opposite of what we've always been hearing about virtual reality, where you put something on, uh, you put something on your head 
and you get so immersed in it and there you go you know the outside world is completely blocked out and you know that is again one point they were driving home with many different instances was this can have the this has the potential to be one of the most interactive and socializing you know gaming experiences out there you know, I didn't get a chance to ask you yesterday uh, for the show when we had Super League Gaming on that, really, because we we had to go right to the next uh, guest. But uh, um, is that something you would uh, you'd like to try out? I mean, if they had it in the theater in your area, is, do you find that appealing? Going through that, sharing personally, that? actively participating in it, not at all. Why? Because oh, by the way, yeah, we're getting off topic, but yeah. Uh, not at all, because I'm not really who it was designed for. Wow. I'm not a you know I, I'm not an eight to sixteen year old. I'm not wow. you know a, a kid looking for other kids and looking for that you know their their own little social group that they fit in better with. Had you I, had that I feel a little bit more secure in my identity? But yeah, hey, that's had, what it is. Had you been had they had that when you were in that age group? What hypotheticals going on, Craig? Yeah, I know. I'm just kind of curious if you would if you would have found it attractive. What I the the thing I took away from that was I would be fully comfortable partnering with them and trying to set something like that up in my area. Like I would completely run something like that because that I think is is just an awesome idea. And to be able to get people together and you know obviously I'm very passionate about gaming and to get people together in a single place and to actually get people to game you know to play games together that seems like a lot of fun so you know i would i would probably be comfortable partnering with them and trying to get that started in my area more than being one of the members and being one of the kids out in the audience makes sense makes a lot of sense all right well we've got a lot of more stories to cover and uh Whoa, wait, wait, we're done well, uh, was there something else that you wanted to talk about? We spend days, and then we spend two hours a day talking about Apple Keynotes, and then we have three other correspondents on talking about their Keynotes. Yes. Oh, my God. You All can't, right. you can't uh, give me 20 minutes? Okay. Well, absolutely. I, I thought we, we went on 13 minutes about it. Let's talk. What else do you want to talk about? I mean, I, I found it interesting. Uh, I did not see the Keynote myself, but uh, obviously – it is a a, a a new ring. I don't watch the Apple keynotes, but I don't kick you off after 15 minutes talking about Apple. <laughs> it, it's definitely a new wrinkle into it, uh, getting part people to participate like that. Uh, certainly. Uh, what do you think of the price point? Affordable. I think it's affordable, uh, and I think it'll because it's affordable. I think uh, it'll uh, because remember, as you say, it's not. Technically, what an Oculus Rift is, they're, they're selling for $99. It's certainly going to be a lot of more people. Uh, it opens it up to a lot more uh, users, the $99 price range. However, uh, as you say, it's not like an Oculus Rift. You don't expect to get that kind of thing when you move your head around. That's not this. This is like putting a screen in front of your eyes, uh, a very large one, or a seeming to be a very large one. And, uh, um, and and then work with the networks that you talked about. I think it's gonna. I think it'll be successful. I think it definitely has a market. Yeah. Uh, ho hopefully, it does this is again the fledgling. This is the fledgling product. Like this is the the very first venture. And you know, looking back at any first release, no tech company has ever got it one hundred percent right. You know, no first release has ever been perfect. Mm -hmm. Sure, we still talk about them and how great they were, but at the same time. You know, there's always a generation two, generation three, generation ten. It's it's just going to happen. So with with this first one, they did have a key that they had a couple of people on. They actually had the lead developer of Unreal Engine, mm -hmm. and he's been working on the Unreal Engine product for 20 years. And and he's talking about how excited he was for this whole platform and and how he can't wait for it to mature and see what game developers can really do because. You know the, the the Oculus Connect 2 convention, or not really convention, but the uh, uh, the keynote was there for developers. Like like everyone in the audience was a developer in some capacity. So he was mentioning to everyone how they were, you know, they, they were where they were they were at the beginning of this, and in 20 years when they write when they write books about virtual reality and how it started and where it's been, where it's going, you know, they're gonna mention this exact moment this exact product and say hey i remember being there at the you know and listening to 
you know, them announce this kind of thing. So obviously they have some big names who are very, very excited about this finally coming to fruition. And I guess I'd be remiss if we moved on from the Oculus Rift without mentioning, of course, one video game out of, you know, out of everything we've talked about so far. And this one is a futuristic sci-fi um, first person shooter that is called uh, Bullet Time. I, no, no, I'm sorry, Bullet Train. There we go. I'm sorry, Bullet Train. It's, it's a sci-fi first person shooter for the Oculus Touch. Now, for anyone out there, Oculus Touch, you get these two little semicircle hand hand gesture control kind of deals, mm -hmm. and you hold them out in front of you, and that's how you're going to be interacting with things in virtual reality. So it's obviously a little violent, you know, first person shooter. <laughs> well, first person shooter, they, they, you know, they, there's no gore, you know. Let, let, let's get down to it. There's you shoot people with guns, but there's no blood and you know, no nothing like that. But it's a Futuristic, uh, futuristic sci-fi shooter, and again, this is in. Yes, he just grabbed a rocket out of the air and threw it back at the robot. But um, all right, so realism may be out a little bit. But so it's 360 degrees, though. So this is one of the first uh, games we're going to have where you're going to have to not only focus on what's in front of you, but also what's behind you, and you know what's to the left and right of you, what's above you. It's you know. This is from Epic Games, by the way, which is a very uh, reputable, you know, company. So look forward to that. It's it's I'm sure just kind of a demo e kind of game. Don't expect it to win any kind of you know storyline, rich storyline awards. But at the same time, it's just kind of showing off what the technology can do and what we can expect from this platform. Okay. All right. Um, by the way, that, 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 that looks like the, uh, aliens movie that, uh, the oh, I'm glad you know Fox, yeah. you know, them, they make movies yes. is bringing more than a hundred movies to the Oculus VR cinema. Right. That was what we were talking about where you get kind of this big screen, oh. you sit, you know, you of course sit in your home, but you strap, you strap on your Oculus VR and you, you are virtually put into a movie theater and this movie theater is going to have a giant screen. Biggest you've ever seen, of course, all a trick of the eye because you know to to you with a screen a couple inches from your from your eyes, these things look like 105 inch screens. You know they're absolutely massive, and being in virtual reality instead of augmented reality, you're going to be immersed. So VR cinema, uh, you'll be able to sit down, watch any of these movies, and they are you know, Fox exclusives, you know, maybe even movies that Netflix and Hulu don't even have. Mm -hmm. They said that movies that are coming include Alien, which is why you get this, mm -hmm. uh, Alien, Birdman, Taken, Die Hard, Office Space, personal I, favorite. I really like that, obviously. And, and a lot more. So, uh, you know, they said they are not full VR experiences, but you can bring something like a movie theater to wherever you are and even let friends watch together from anywhere. So I'm sure, you know, so I'm not sure if there's going to be some kind of, you know, avatar representation of people sitting next to each other. But if, if um, you know, if I can glean anything from the keynote, it sounds like you'll be able to kind of enter a screening room and you and then, you know, when both of you agree or when everyone in your party agrees, you all kind of hit play and it plays at the same time. And then you sit there, you can talk to each other. And the movie plays on the screen in front of you simultaneously. Yeah, while while you're all kind of you know quote unquote watching together. Very cool. Very cool. So you know it's uh as the article from Engage says we're not ready to trade in our big screen HD TVs, but especially on a plane or in a hotel room, we can see using this to get away uh, without going anywhere. And an Oculus uh, headset or Gear VR packs uh, packs into a bag much better than our TVs do. Yes and no, of course, because we've—I think it was like two days, uh, two days ago—we just talked about a laptop that was sporting a a an NVIDIA GTX 970. Yes, yes right. Uh -huh. So it, that is Oculus Rift compatible. Yeah. So you know, maybe a laptop, but that's still going to cause a lot of heat, and I'm sure it's going to drain the heck out of your battery. But at the same time, you know, hey, it's um, uh, it's mobile. 
So, hey, a movie theater anywhere you are. You very, very cool. It's, uh, you know, so movies, games, social. This is this is just the beginning of virtual reality. Of course, it's, you know, November, just a month and a half away. Can't wait. Well, but just November, and we're going to see the very first products. I'm sure by the time, this time next year, we're going to have, you know, probably about half a dozen to a dozen different products on the market. And then that's when the fun begins because it starts building its base. People start developing for the platform. And then in the coming years, we're we're really going to start seeing what virtual reality is going to become. I mean, you know, maybe enough people are going to get motion sick and it's just not going to catch on. It's going to be everything 3D TV was going to promise it was going to be. And then 3D TV died out. This could die out the very same. But it shows a lot of promise and they're giving it more and more applications as time goes on. So be ready, save up your pennies, and try to jump aboard as fast as you can because personally, I think it's very, very exciting and I really want to see this take off. So I want everyone to buy into virtual reality as hard as you can. <laughs> that's, that, that's my message. So if you didn't watch the keynote, definitely go watch it it's available on twitch.tv for sure under the oculus user profile it's on youtube you can go to gadget where they had a great write-up and all these great articles with with related videos of course you can go to you know just about anywhere just google it if you have to but the keynote is definitely worth watching it's new technology shown for the first time all right and there you go all right uh, uh Thanks, Ben, for that. Um, no comment? Nah, I've been commenting through it all, but I think right. definitely watch it. And uh, it's obviously something worthwhile to watch. Oh, there's there was a there was a Schwarzenegger in the uh, what was that movie? Um, uh, anyhow, Alien? Alien? No, no, not Alien. Uh, Predator. 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 Yeah, exactly. All right. Well, moving right along, uh, this next story from uh, Maximum PCs, Paul Lilly, uh, Mozilla wants you to test tracking protection in Firefox 42 beta. Um, according to this, uh, you're one step closer to being invisible on the web. Okay, now obviously there's certain websites you might not want others to know you visit, whether it's shopping for a surprise gift, uh, signing up for a Justin Bieber's fan club, or more realistically, you know, looking at porn. Uh, whatever you do on, right. on the web is your business except that websites try to make it their business too, you see. Uh, websites actually make a lot of money. Uh, well, they, they, they really want to discover where, you know, what, what website were you just going to and what website, uh, you know, what website you're on and then what website you go to next because that kind of leads them to, you know, that, that gives them very important analytics about just who maybe their competition is or just who their partner should be or things like that. And, you know, hey, as, as people, sometimes you really don't want other people to know, you know, that's that, true. hey, I just came from this website that's, you know, not too kid friendly. And now I'm on CNN.com. It's like, eh, it really has no relevance to anything. Well, that's where private browsing modes come into play. You know, uh, you can you can set your uh, to private browsing. However, taking it a step further, uh, Firefox 42 beta adds tracking protection to the mix. Uh, one of several experimental features it wants you to try out. See, Mozilla's theory is that users have a greater expectation of privacy when using private browsing in Firefox. It says users have provided feedback to support this notion, and so it created a feature in Firefox private browsing mode that blocks certain page elements. Uh, most websites rely on many different third parties companies that are separate from the site you're visiting, uh, to provide analytics, social network buttons, and display advertising. These third parties sometimes include page elements that could record your browsing activity to create profiles about you across multiple sites, and private browsing with tracking protection in Firefox beta blocks some of those page elements. Okay, that's according to Mozilla. Um, for Firefox 42 beta is the only mainstream browser that protects users from website tracking in such a manner. So if you want to give it a go, you can install the beta, click the menu button, and click the new private window icon to launch a private browsing section. session. 
A control center screen should appear that confirms tracking protection is now on. Just surf the web you as you would normally at this point. And to disable it on a specific website, click the shield icon on the left side of the URL bar. This brings up the aforementioned control center where you can choose display protection for this session. So there it is again. It's still in beta, obviously, but uh, yet another another uh, uh, feature. See, a, a company like Mozilla, I think, would be the best company to really do this because Mozilla isn't really in the business of selling advertising. No. Whereas Google, they're totally in that business. So if you use Chrome, you can be sure that even if you have you know private browsing or, or, or any other kind of semblance of that, that just keeps your computer that you're browsing from from storing that kind you know from storing those cookies and storing that kind of information but you can be dang sure that all that information that you know even in private browsing or anything like that all that data is being sent to google who's who's being run through a giant machine and they are pulling analytics from everything there's no such thing as private browsing on microsoft edge there's no such thing as private browsing on uh, Google Chrome, on Safari, all these big, big, big companies, they really want that data and they're going to get it. And, you know, private browsing doesn't mean the same to them as it does to something like Mozilla. Because I think Mozilla, you know, gets a lot of their money from venture capital and donations and things like that, but they're really independent from their advertising. So, you know, good to see that Mozilla, they've kind of been struggling I think in the modern browser era because their their market share has been waning because I think they kind of lost sight of you know just what their purpose should be you know w what is the purpose of, of Mozilla because an easy to use and uh, an easy to use browser that you can show a lot of great content on I mean that's every modern browser nowadays but I think if Mozilla keeps going going this way and going with hey we're the secure browser then I think Mozilla is going to see you know some of their market share reclaimed. Yeah, uh, because a lot of it has, has gone to grow. But, you know, but Mozilla, Firefox is still a major one of the major players. They're still one, of the, but they've but they haven't been increasing. They've been decreasing. Decreasing to whom? To Chrome and of course, uh, I, I mean, uh, Mozilla Firefox at one point had about forty percent of of the whole browser market share. And then Chrome came, uh, and then Chrome came on, and you know Internet Explorer is what it is, and even Internet, uh, I'm sorry, uh, Microsoft Edge, the Edge browser has made some headway, and I think Mozilla is down to about 20% now. Like they're they're half of what they used to be. Well, they can't be happy about that. They can't. No, but I think you know it, it was because they can't just be another you know easy to use browser because at this point every modern browser is essentially easy to use. And, you know, Mozilla tried that for a while. It just wasn't working. But if they keep going this way, we're the private browser, we're the secure browser. If you use us, you can be sure that, you know, you're not really leaving as big of a digital footprint as you would be if you use someone else. Then, you know, hey, that's something that no other browser is looking to do. Like, again, Chrome, they're never going to look to keep you completely anonymous and secure. All right, you're so, listening to the Computer America Show. We'll be right back with more. Don't go anywhere. Hi, this is Craig Crossman, host of the Computer America Show. You have important meetings to schedule. Your company's getting ready for its IPO. And you're in charge of the PTA fundraiser this month. So how do you coordinate everyone to be available at the same time? Are you still using emails, phone calls, even text messages to schedule meetings with a group of people? How's that working out for you? <laughs> That's so great, huh? It's a fact that every day, millions of people suffer from scheduling headaches. Well, with Doodle, scheduling meetings with a group of people is quick and easy. With Doodle, you can easily propose available times to each member. Each one checks off the times that they are available, and then you simply pick the time that works best for the group, all in an easy-to-read display that integrates with your existing calendar. Nothing could be more simple. Give Doodle a try for free, and like millions of Doodle users, you'll truly see how easy it is to find the perfect date and time for all your meetings. That's www.doodle.com. Looking for a best friend? Brother Wolf Animal Rescue has your best friend waiting just for you. 
The mission of Brother Wolf Animal Rescue is to help build a sustainable, no-kill community where no dogs or cats are ever killed for population control, where true euthanasia is reserved only for animals who are irremediably suffering or for animals who are truly a threat to society and with no hope of rehabilitation. Brother Wolf staff and volunteers go door-to-door, -door, neighborhood by neighborhood, to educate citizens about local resources available for at-risk pets and to help their families connect with those resources. Brother Wolf's community-based approach to no no Kill helps keep family pets healthy, happy, and in their homes and out of the local shelter system in the first place. For more information or to make a tax-deductible donation to this wonderful 501c3 organization, visit their website at www.bwar.org. Help to realize Brother Wolf's vision when no animal is euthanized for lack of a home. Who's a good boy? <laughs> Hey, I said bombast, not dumb. Oh, hi, it's Marty Winston with a news tips bullet review for Computer America, this time Swiss Plus Tech Tools. Some multi-tools have cutouts as wrenches, stubs as screwdrivers, and so on. Swiss Plus Tech sent a mother load. Their 15-in-1 Mega Max has eight wrench sizes, 10 drivers, a nail puller, a pry bar, and an LED flashlight, all in the size of a chiclets pack. The carabiner-shaped Micro Slim SDX has wrenches, drivers, a bottle opener, a safety blade, and a key ring quick release. Their key-shaped Mobile Tech Charge Sink has a USB-A one end, a lightning on the other, and a flashlight in the body. Bodyguard Elite for the car has a talking tire gauge, a tread depth tracker, glass breaker, seat belt cutter, red blinker, loud alarm, and an LED flashlight. Bottom line, agility across the Swiss Plus Tech multi-tool line makes them all notable and totable. Marty Winston with News Tips Bulletin for Computer America. Welcome back to the Computer America Show. It is 33 minutes past the hour in the second hour of the show. We're just right in the middle of computer and technology news brought to you by Slimware Utilities, the official optimization software of Computer America. And yeah, you know, uh, Craig just, uh, well, you know, we were just doing this article about Mozilla and their new beta 42 and how Firefox, they're hoping to become the most secure and private browser mm -hmm. out there. Yes, exactly. But I think we finished with the story. All right, all right. So next story. Mm -hmm. I don't know. There's a lot of good ones, and I don't think we're going to get to a lot or even most of them. No. But let's talk about Tesla. We haven't talked about them in about two days. So uh, Tesla Model X, this one's very cool, uh, is going to, in 2016, will be launching. Yes, you heard right. We'll be launching with gull wing door. Uh, I'm sorry, falcon wing doors. Yes. Not gull wing. Falcon wing doors. So, and... And also electric all-wheel drive. You can see the picture here, the little silhouette of their announcement. And well, the Falcon Wing doors, and we heard this from Mike Cermak, it kind of explained it, as opposed to Gull Wing doors. Uh, Gull Wing, uh, Falcon Wing doors literally open almost. I mean, they 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 raise up, but they don't require. You could be close to a wall and still open the uh, the door. Whereas the Gull Wing, if you were parked near a wall, you couldn't open it; it would hit the wall because it it kind of swivels out. Gull wings kind of lift up and go in. So, you know, well, at the same time, if you're parking that close to a wall, you probably can't get out. Yeah, so. I mean, as an example, you know, what, what the difference between the two. They look right. similar, but they're they're a little different. But anyway, right. they're very sexy looking. They're, yeah, they, they really are. So, yeah, uh, next week, Tesla will finally kick covers off its much anticipated Model X, the SUV follow up to its all electric Model S sedan. So before the California automaker reveals its specification, however, there's much we already know or can infer. So yeah, the uh, the Model X uses similar architecture to the Model S. So most importantly, the two models share the electric drivetrain and chassis on which their bodies rest. Very important in case you know the the production needs to go up on either one of these, and hopefully they do. It wouldn't be that it wouldn't be that hard. For the company to start producing them in bulk, you know, either or. So, uh, though they they said that uh, with the Model X, Tesla wants to give its customers a roomy vehicle with wet weather capability and a high and a high riding position for a commanding view of the road. Uh, Tesla maintains its placeholder page for the Model X on its website, noting that the car will be a seven seat SUV, so two in the front three in the middle 
And two in the back. back. No, two in the back. I don't yeah. know. Yeah. So, no, no, no. Oh, wait. Two in the front, two in the middle, three in the back. That that has to be what it is. That that has to be what it is. So seven seat sedan, or I'm sorry, seven seat uh, SUV with the Model X. And you know, they even have a front view of this thing, and it looks like a very, very nice SUV. I mean, very sleek, sharp edges, uh, you know, nothing, nothing you can really fault here. But I think the fun part is, of course, going to be the the goal. I'm sorry, the Falcon. I keep wanting to say Goldwing. I don't know why. The Falcon wing doors, mm-hmm. and they have a picture here of someone using them. And if and if you could, now a traditional SUV van kind of deal, they either had you know kind of you you open the door and you either had to push the seat forward and kind of fold the chair up so you can climb in the back, or you had um, you had these doors that would kind of pop out and slide back yeah. and, you know left more room whereas now if you can see in the picture you're going to be able to climb into the far back just by opening up these doors yeah it looks very it looks very very cool uh look, you can see how how the the guy is in the chair behind there you have a lot of you ha- you have total access to the car right yeah. right yeah. J- just just from that one uh you know vertical opening door mm-hmm. So yeah, and you know, just kind of going through some of, the... <laughs> kind of going some of the different things exactly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Just going over some of the different things, the huge center console and things like that. But yeah, exactly. Yeah, just the uh, mo- the Model X will be coming out in a little bit. Okay. Uh, and I can't wait to you know start seeing. I I have yet to see a Model S, but I can't wait to see a Model X either. Did you see the 17-inch touch panel uh, on the on the control panel? It looks really, really slick, too. Oh, yeah. No, huge, huge. Huge, exactly. All right, so uh, um, those, for you Tesla enthusiasts, that's uh, something you might like to hear a little more. I want to move over to Maximum PCs again. Paul Lilly uh, did this story on Turtle Beach. Uh, targets gamers of every platform and with their Recon 50 series uh, headset. Uh, they're claiming low frills and a low price headset. Um, now, uh, Turtle Beach is getting ready to announce their Air Force Recon 50 series, which is a new line of its headsets for PC, uh, uh, Xbox One, they have the Recon 50X, and the PlayStation 4, which is the Recon 50P. Okay. Um, Turtle Beach didn't go out all out with its new Recon 50 line. Instead, this is a budget headset with a $40 MSRP price tag and lightweight design. 40 bucks for this thing. I, I, I'm looking at this picture. I thought this thing would like be $80, $90. It's got a really nice look to it. 40 bucks for this thing. That's MSRP. See, I, I would comp- Turtle Beach, unfortunately, has a pretty bad re- reputation nowadays. Oh, really? Um, yeah, I, I, I'm not going to say that it's completely in the gar- it, it's, it's completely bad, but Turtle Beach at one point they were industry leading. They were you know amazing headsets to have for your computer, and then I don't know what ha- happened, but around the time that the Xbox 360 came out, um, you know they their their quality just dropped tremendously, and they had you know f- for comparable prices. They had terrible sound. Their their stuff, you know, especially their wireless options would disconnect and would drop all the time. It was not a very good experience for anyone. And you know, I guess Recon Fifty maybe just maybe might be what they need to you know kind of get some some of that some of their customers back. But. I don't know. That it just even to this day, that their higher end models don't get very good reviews. Well, this seems to have good review. It says uh, the their inside the ear cups have got forty millimeter neodymium uh, uh, demium, uh, speakers drivers, uh, and uh, they have uh, well the synthetic light leather wrapped ear cups provide improved bass and noise isolation. So. Um, yeah, but although in the article it says they're they're a bit skeptical of Turtle Beach claims because it at the forty dollar retail, uh, the Recon Fifty also has an adjustable high sensitivity boom mic, uh, which is non removable, along with inline controls with mic mute and master volume buttons. Um, and though it's pitched at PC gamers, the Recon Fifty can plug into any system with a three point five millimeter audio jack, be it a tablet, smartphone, and so forth. 
So there it is. They're getting ready to launch with this uh, headset tomorrow, along with the iPhone. So there you go. What do you think? Um, if it go by looks, it looks great. But you know, then again, uh, see, I don't even think it looks great because I've I've seen a lot of different headsets, and if you look here, they have these plastic parts where you expand and contract them. Yeah, I see it. And you know, I've I've had other headsets that have plastic uh, adjustable, you know, the, the headband part, mm -hmm. and I got to say, after you go metal. Those plastic, they they crack, they snap. You you drop them too too sharply. You man, you know, you kind of mishandle them, and those things kind of crack on you. Uh huh. Well, uh, so I, I, you know, it, I think we should have them on the show to talk about their 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 stuff, because you know lately their quality has been suffering, and I don't think this is the one that's going to save them. Okay. Well. Um... I can't argue with you. I mean, I certainly understand about the uh, plastic not being as as, red, uh, as rugged as metal. So, um, anyway, they were coming out with it tomorrow, so we would mention it. Okay, then. All right. So, next story. Uh, we're going to talk about this one, and this is a great day to be. Well, every day is a great day to be human, but this is a, an especially great time. For this gentleman, and although it's yes, it's just research. Yes, it's just an experiment. But hey, he was able to do it for the first time. So a paraplegic has walked without a robotic suit. Wow. So this one from Engadget as well. But for everyone out there, uh, we've been doing a lot of stories lately about medical technology and how exoskeletons and different things they, you know this whole new thing where science science is getting accurate enough that you can actually uh, hook technology to spinal cords and to the brain actually get them to be controlled just by thought instead of having a separate controller or or, or a computer to, to control them but to actually think about it and then the like we just did one about a prosthetic hand that was able to open and close on its own like that and, and that was very incredible but now this uh this paraplegic has walked without robotics using his own bright his own brain waves and this coming out of uh uc irvine california so scientists at, well you know uh university of Cal california irvine but anyway scientists used a computer to link the 28 year old adam fritz's brain to his legs over a bluetooth connection bypassing the severed region of his spinal cord. Hmm. Yes, folks, you heard that right. His legs are now officially Bluetooth. <laughs> and that's very cool. So an EEG then picked up signals from his brain, which were relayed by a brain control interface. I don't know why they need to shorten that to BCI, but they did. A uh, computer to electrodes on his knees, triggering walking movements. Though Fritz was supposed uh, was supported and only walked haltingly for 12 feet, the research is being heralded as a milestone. So far, paralyzed patients have only been able to walk using suits like the Exobionics, which was, uh, you know, actually, d didn't we have the Exo on? Uh, we, the we we did a story about them. We did a news story. Yeah, you're right. I think. Right, we did that with Ralph Bond, and we were going to have them on. That's right, that's right. So anyways, uh, exobionics, which was, again, an exoskeleton kind of deal where you strap a paraplegic in, and then you attach it to, you know, their their a device in, in, the, in their spinal cord, and that would relay signals to the robotics, and the robotics would then walk for them. All great and well, but this is a step further. This is, this is taking the robotics out of it and just controlling your legs with, Bluetooth and you know relaying the signal very very cool so I guess in this sense the Bluetooth is actually taking the place of the spinal cord that is that's hard that's to very fathom. impressive yeah hard to fathom but look at that right so it wasn't just a matter of strapping on an EEG cap and taking a stroll prior to the attempt Fritz underwent extensive physical uh, rehab to strengthen his muscles and learn to control a virtual avatar using the BCI device so he's also made similar movements in the lab while suspended lightly above the floor. And during the conversation, 
with Sky News, who I'm assuming is the you know original information, Fritz dubbed the interface a mind walker and said it's complete constant it's complete concentration. You have to think about every single step when you're doing it. So despite the success, the team said there's still a lot of work to do. Uh, there's still a lot of work to be done for patients uh, before they can gain mobility. They said the next step is to reduce the EEG components and enough that they can be implanted into the brain, which can give patients more precise control and the ability to sense pressure. We have heard of other uh, prosthesis just recently gaining the ability to sense pressure. Mm -hmm. So that was also, you know, recently done. This is, uh, it seems like every day we're, we're, we're reaching a new innovation in medical technology. It's crazy. It is. And uh, he said, you know, it, for him, it was an incredible experience. You know, he, he said, normally you're just sitting in the hospital hoping that someone's really going to, you can walk again. But when it actually happened to him, he said it was a dream come true. So there. Still a long way to go. But hey, the journey of a thousand miles begins with a single step. Yeah. Right. And it's, it, it's of course, a, a first step, but it's a, if nothing else that we've seen with technology, you prove that you can do it. And then it's just a matter of time before it gets smaller, smaller, more powerful, more powerful, easier to use, easier to use. So with this first thing, if nothing else, to prove a concept. And after that, it becomes, hey, you know, it's uh, it's all about refining at that point. Yep, it is. Okay, uh, this next story from Mashable. Uh, Gmail finally lets you block annoying senders, which is kind of good. Um, because who likes annoying senders? Uh, this is by Stan Schroeder. Uh, Google launched a new version of Gmail for Android on Tuesday, bringing two simple but pretty important features, the block sender and unsubscribe buttons. Okay. The unsubscribe option was previously available on the desktop version of Gmail, but now you can get that annoying mailing list, uh, you can get off that annoying mailing list from your Android device as well. As for blocking a sender completely, that's both on Android and the web. Now, the block option is in the messages right side corner menu, just below the print option. Uh, tap it, and you'll never hear from that sender again. Uh, their emails go directly to the spam folder. Now, if you want to unblock someone, you can do so in Gmail settings. Unsubscribe is located in the app's top right corner menu uh, while you're viewing it, uh, viewing a message, and below the mark important option. Okay. Uh, and basically, they give a demonstration of how it works. Uh, both features will be gradually rolling out to users with the block coming to the web in one to three days, while both options could take longer than three days to appear on Android. So just something uh, something uh, keeps gives you more control over your email. Very cool. All right. So this next story, uh, Lenovo. They are in the news again, but not in a good way, unfortunately. They've been slapped in the wrist for this before. They're going to be slapped in the wrist for this again. And I'm sure a lot of people out there who actively go and fix and clean bloatware off of computers for your friends and family, uh, expect this from Lenovo. They have been caught installing spyware on its machines again. No, not again. Again, that's, that's the operative word. So, of course, uh, despite launching a number of interesting products this year, Lenovo has perhaps got more press time for the things it's done wrong. So it's a Chinese technology conglomerate, and this time it's allegedly installing a program on at least some of its refurbished notebook lineup that is, pro that is programmed to send users' feedback data to Lenovo. So upon further inspection, the program seems to have an association with a third-party marketing and web analytics firm. Hmm. So as, as per many users report, the company ships its factory refurbished laptops with a program called Lenovo Customer Feedback Program 64 that is scheduled to run every day. According to its description, Lenovo Customer Feedback Program 64 uploads customer and feedback program data to Lenovo. Right, so upon further digging, uh, a, a gentleman called Michael Horowitz of Computer World found that these files that these files in the folder of the aforementioned program uh, 
lenovo.dvt.customerfeedbackagent.exe.config, uh, they said that they had a DLL and and uh, they had two files. It said that it was uh, customer feedback innovation apps and customer feedback Omniture site catalyst. So as you for as you, as you further point out, Omniture, as mentioned in the suffix of one of the file names, is a marketing and web analytics firm which suggests that the laptops are tracking and monitoring users' activities. Hmm. Yeah, so on its support site, the noted that it may include software components that communicate with servers on the internet, and these applications could be on any and every Think Center, Think Station, and ThinkPad lineups. So one of the application list, listed in the website is, of course, uh, Lenovo.tvt. Uh, customerfeedback.agent.exe.config. So this isn't the first time Lenovo's been caught. And the even, uh, if, if you remember, they were recently in the news this year for a spyware called Superfish yeah. on its machines. So the company was caught covertly downloading and installing software on Windows PCs. And of course, the program modified the BIOS to force the computer to download its program upon each login. Mm. So uh -huh. Lenovo, if you purchase a Lenovo, especially it sounds like a refurbished Lenovo, be sure to maybe take any unnecessary pro. I mean, we recommend that to, to begin with. Whenever you get a new PC, there are things you know you will never use. And sometimes there's, well, a lot of times, if it's a pre-made computer, there is undoubtedly going to be bloatware, which was, of course, paid for to be on there. And you just have to know how to take it off and distinguish what is important and what is not. Hmm. Well, you know, we have time maybe for one more story here. And I'm kind of torn between which one I want to do. But uh, I think I'm just going to go with this cool one from Popular Science. Uh, a towering 3D printer that builds clay homes. Clay homes. Well, yeah, and as, uh, as they say, uh, clay homes are as old as dirt. <laughs> and older if you count those made by insects. This doesn't mean that an ancient technique can't get a thoroughly modern makeover. And the world's advanced saving project, or WASP, uh, the, a wasp after the anthropod, anthropod must nest builders, has a giant machine that can 3D print a home out of cheap, durable mud. And I'm watching the videos here. It's amazing. Uh, so demonstrated uh, last week as a as part of a three-day reality of dream rally, the printer named Big Delta is intended to inspire the creation of low-cost housing made to meet the needs of the world's impoverished. Uh, besides clay, the printer uses straw, dirt, mud, and water found on site, creating an effect not unlike Adobe. Uh, Earth isn't the only place where people want to 3D print housing from local materials. There are architects who want to do the same thing on the moon which makes sense because then you wouldn't have to carry all the materials with you. You just use what you find there. Uh, it's impressive, but the real test of mechanical building is if it's faster at building houses than a brick laying robot. And uh, so I don't think they're comparing it side by side, but basically uh, this is very cool because uh, you know, you can go to impoverished areas um, or even in a space exploration, you wouldn't have to carry the material with you. You just use the materials wherever you go and, and build Build a home, or build a uh, uh, build the place that uh, that you can reside. I feel like you would have to build this into some sort of mobile platform mm -hmm. because I can't really see going into impoverished ar areas and setting up a bunch of forty foot scaffolding like material, mm -hmm. and then of course all the heavy machinery that goes within the scaffolding. So I would like to see, and this is just you know, me being picky, I would like to see this kind of thing set up on a giant trailer bed, truck bed kind of deal. Mm. And yes, it's 40 foot, but I've seen cranes. They, they know how to make things tall and portable. Yeah. And, you know, try set it up so that you could move it from area to area and it just kind of, you know, poops out homes. Yeah. <laughs> I guess. Uh, I guess it does. <laughs> exactly. I think you have time for one more story, Ben. Oh, yeah, the way you're going. All right, so uh, next story we're going to do is, 
All right, this one is a little controversial, and hopefully we have time for it. But uh, for anyone out there, you know that song. It's been stuck in your head for the last, you know, eight months. It's all about that bass. Oh, yeah. It's all about that bass. That, yeah, okay. Mm-hmm. So that, uh, if, if we sing any more, we have to pay royalties. So, mm-hmm. uh, but about the royalties, songwriter says he made only $5,679 from 178 million Pandora streams. Wow. Five grand for 178 million streams. So this was, I believe, taken to court. And this and this was done by a gentleman. Uh, hmm, let's see. Kevin the, the, the artist is Megan Trainer, And she co-wrote this with someone else. Uh, trying to find this, this uh, gentleman's name. Kevin Kaddish. That's it. So, and he co-wrote it with her. And according to this article, saying that he he recently filed a a lawsuit against you know the powers that be, saying that he made about thirty two dollars for every one million streams of his song yeah. that he co-wrote. So he didn't. Uh, I kind of just didn't clarify to the roundtables five members of the House of Representatives exactly how the songwriter proceeds were split between himself and trainer. But he did allege that the, that the average streaming service payout for a song, uh, for a song songwriting team is roughly $90 per million streams. So obviously if you're a songwriter, don't expect to make your living from streaming music. So that's, uh, that's as big a song as a songwriter can have in their career. And number one in 78 countries but you're only making fifty six hundred dollars off of essentially what could be your biggest song. So this one is, is a little more complicated, and we really don't have time to get into it. But I do want to say that it's not as clear cut as the article, you know, as the title kind of makes out to be, because the cut that the songwriter gets yeah. is kind of negotiated within the contract before everything is set in stone. So it sounds like it sounds like he has some kind of poorly worded or poorly uh, you know argued contract where he got a very very minimal percentage of the overall proceeds that the song gets. Yeah. So it sounds like he he got worked over by a bad contract, and now he's trying to go back and you know kind of take it up to the court level and saying that hey, I, you know here's my songwriter equality act. And songwriters deserve more no matter what. Well, that wraps up the show for t- today. Uh, again, thanks to our guest from Stitcher, Stitch in the first hour. And um, tomorrow, it's Friday, and we've got Nathan Evans, managing editor of Pop Zara Magazine. Great guy. All kinds of fun topics. We're kind of all over the road. Uh, and that's what Nathan Ava- Evans does with us. And we look forward to having him here on tomorrow night's show. And, of course, we'll have our... Uh, social media winner of the week and that's all coming up on tomorrow night's program so that uh, wraps up the show and Ben and I will see you here same time same station so until tomorrow night this is Craig Crossman hoping that your hard disk never becomes floppy we'll see you tomorrow afternoon seconds they didn't hear you say goodnight everyone you're muted oh well (laughs) there you go Thank you for using Blog Talk Radio. Goodbye. Okay, everybody. Again, thanks for watching. And uh, hopefully you got your entry in for uh, our contest tomorrow, tomorrow afternoon. And Ben and I will see you tomorrow. Take care. Bye-bye.